today we're going to be talking about initial first impressions with the new asus rogue ally now i've used this since launch and here it is this is the the new asus rogue uh ally here i've used this since launch and there's three things that i want to cover today first is initial response and to set realistic expectations with you all if you're thinking about getting this and what to expect um part of that is is have the youtube reviews been consistent um honest etc and so we'll cover that secondly i want to cover what it's like actually gaming with this the real gaming with this um and then third set expectations as far as like type of content that i'm going to do going forward from this since this is just an initial response video um so please consider subscribing if this is some content that you want to take part in and you want to be a part of the community also i did an unboxing of this which is very different from what you typically would see from an unboxing um, it's the type of content that i want to add into my environment more often and so i'm going to link that here so let me know your feedback and your thoughts on that and if that's something you want to see the initial first power on was very rough um, and so i want to set expectations to that because i don't want you to run from the product when you go through that because i went through it so my very first power on it got hung up um, during the wi-fi section i couldn't add the wi-fi password because the keyboard wouldn't open up and so i had to power it off a couple times to power it back on and then once i did that then the keyboard finally showed up and i was able to enter the passphrase or the key phrase or whatever etc to get onto my network now going from there run a windows update immediately because as soon as you turn this on it is a full windows 11 and i cannot stress that enough because that does change things as regards to a handheld versus a mini pc and so you're going to want to do the windows update first because there was roughly 30 updates along with security updates along with um, three updates that required a system restart when you first turn this on you will not be able to use it right away this was not like the logitech g cloud when you first turned it on and all you had to do was power it up and then kind of sign in and then get going it's not like that at all this is a full mini pc and so you need to have the expectations that you're going to have to set this up like a full desktop pc and you're going to have to go through all of those steps to set it up and so first initial turn on is going to be updating the windows um, operating system going through all of those updates and then you're also going to be hit with three or four different rogue asus firmware updates that also have to be completed before you can even use this now that's not there's nothing wrong with that because what's happening is we're early adopters and early adopters are going to be dealing with the bare bones systems that are going to arrive because we pre-ordered these now if you ordering if you're ordering this later on in the cycle the life cycle of this six months later from launch date you know november december you're probably going to be getting uh samples that have already had the updated versions of windows and different things like that put on them so depending on when you buy this it's going to determine how much of this is going to impact you and so i want to talk about the experience of the uh, of after after you go through all that and you turn it on and as you can see this is a beautiful screen it's a 1080p screen but it is a beautiful screen but the functionality of the fingerprint fingerprint reader is exceptional it this turn this device unlocks so fast it's in an instant it's in an instant that it unlocks. As soon as your finger touches that, it's one of the best implementations I've ever seen of the fingerprint um, unlocking. From there, Thursday of in between work, trying to understand how to use it, and then Friday, uh, Thursday evening, playing games on it, and then Friday doing this video. And so, I'm 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 still not an expert on this. I didn't get a lot of time ahead of time. So this is a fresh and realistic first impressions of this like i didn't get to sit with this for a week before i'm talking to you i'm still figuring out the bugs and the the usage usage myself um whether or not you use this in gamepad mode or desktop mode is something i'm still trying to understand so desktop mode of course this is going to function like a regular pc um many you know regular pc and how you kind of navigate windows 11 gamepad mode is going to be more along the lines of this operating like a gamepad a handheld gamepad you can also set it to auto so that depending on what you're doing whether you're playing games or if you're using this as a desktop and surfing the web and different stuff like that that will determine how that is going to be used 
the main thing that we're looking at this for but potentially is going to be gaming. Um, you're going to use this as a game pad um, or a handheld, but it's not a handheld in the the original sense, if you will. This operates like a computer. And so this is going to be a computer experience, meaning that you're going to have to download launchers. You're going to have to download desktop applications. You're going to have to download the full versions of games to play them. Um, this isn't a scenario like the G Cloud where you turn it on and you're clicking icons only and the icons are going to take you around. You have to manage windows on this. And so you're going to have to hit the windows button. You're going to have to navigate through Windows 11. And so if you have still used Windows 10 to this point, like myself, I've been afraid to switch to Windows 11 because of compatibility issues with software that I use for, for my content. Um, you're going to have to learn Windows 11. You're going to have to learn how to navigate Windows 11, which is a new experience. And I, the jury is out um, as far as how well this works. A lot of people have strong opinions on Windows 11 versus 10. Um, for me, I'm still trying to learn it. Um, and it's touch touch function as well because of the nature of a handheld. And so you're going to have, that's a learning curve that you're going to have to have before you even get to touch the product and use the product that the way that you want to use it. And again, that's not a negative. I'm just setting you up for realistic expectations to temper your expectations. And so when you actually get this, um, you can address it accordingly. And then once you get to a, a, a situation where you're a scenario where you understand how to use it you'll have the most optimal experience. But I don't wanna gas you up. I don't want you to think this is super, super easy. One of the reasons I've always been a console gamer is because gaming on a PC is hard. There's compatibility issues that you have to worry about. There's, is there enough RAM? Is there enough, uh, is the GPU strong enough? Is the PC and processing power a bottleneck for the system, um, et cetera, depending on the games, right? And so you have to deal with that with this. Um, and so this is not a device that you can just pick up and go like the I keep going back to the cloud because the experience on this is a go. It's, it's like you pick it up, you play it. It's good to go. You put it back in your pot in, in your backpack or whatever and you go. Um, I'm not again. Don't misconstrue my message. I don't want you to think that this is bad. I just want you to be realistic. So this is a full on computer and you have to treat this like a computer. You have to be aware of memory. Um, mean, meaning RAM, um, you have to be aware of the processing power and the graphical power from the GPU and how that affects your gameplay. And so from next, let's move into gameplay. I played uh, The Witcher 3 yesterday for about an hour um, and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, however, this is a 1080p screen, but because this is a PC and not a handheld, you can't enjoy the 1080p screen all the way up to what it's capable of doing in every game. Different games are going to have different needs in order to play on this on this um, Asus Rogue Ally. Meaning you can't just take out Witcher and play 1080p at 120 hertz. You can't do that. Um, you're going to have to play with the different settings and um, one big thing that a lot of people um, are leaving off is that in order to play some of these AAA games, in order for it to look decent and play well, you have to be plugged in and you have to be using the maximum power output. Um, and, and of course, you can adjust it, right? So like, don't get me wrong, it looks good not being plugged in, but it looks good not being plugged in, but as soon as you start playing it, the motion, um, different things like that aren't gonna be as sharp as what you may be expecting based on what you've been hearing um, from the YouTubers and their experience. You know, you know, all I've heard to this point is it's great, it's amazing, it's amazing. And then they'll show a game with 20 frames per second and they'll be like, it's amazing. That's not an amazing experience. Um, <laughs> 20 frames per second on the game, um, especially at 1080p, right, not 4K. Uh, but that's again I think it's really it's it's I, I gotta walk a fine line of realistic expectations and still talk about how good this device is um, my first reactions to the thumbsticks were not the best they feel really um, really loose um, meaning that if you have to play a game that that demands fine controls um, ie like a shooting game and different stuff like that if you're not like the best gamer like it's going to be really hard for you to game on this um 
I would consider myself decent. Gaming, as if, if I call a duty, you know, first person shooter game, I would consider myself decent with a control pad and I would consider myself good with a mouse and keyboard. Um, and so with that being said, playing this with a control pad, it's not the best experience for me because the fine tuned controls like require you to be very, very um, good with the thumbsticks. And because there's very minimal resistance to these thumbsticks, um, again, that fine tuned controls isn't the best for a player like myself. That does not mean that a player like you won't do good at that. Um, and you may be better than me, most likely. Um, and then if you watch some of the reviews, especially of those people that game a lot, like you can tell they have trained thumbs and stuff like that. And, and, and they did well, or it looked, at least the clips that they were showing looked good. But um, my experience with fine tuned controls is not the best. Now, playing an RPG like The Witcher, like a completely fine using the um, thumbsticks on there. And worst case scenario, you can always connect an actual controller to this. And so I don't want that again to be a hindrance. I just want to point it out because it is a reality. These thumbsticks are super, super light to the touch. Very, no resistance whatsoever. From a user experience standpoint, there's a slight resistance to the thumbsticks on the um, on the G Cloud, especially the right side, which is where you would control aiming, and there isn't on the Ally. And so for me, the, the G Cloud thumbsticks feel better. Um, but as far as gaming, the ver you know the verdict, it's it's a PC, and so you have to be aware of how much RAM is needed to run at 1080p at 120 frames per second for the game that you're playing. And there's going to be a lot of trial and error there until you figure out what um, works for the games that you want to play and so it doesn't like I don't want to point out frame rates on Witcher I don't want to point out frame rates on cyberpunk or anything like that what people are doing because you may not play either one of those games and your experience is going to be determined based on the game that you play like I can give my G cloud to my children and say go have fun because the cloud uh, Xbox game pass cloud on that is gonna it's gonna cap it at 1080p and it's gonna it's gonna run it really well based on the, the Wi-Fi Lastly, in gaming, in Game Pass, you can't play every game. Um, myself has had situations where it just, there's a little smiley face with a sad face that won't allow you to select install the game, but you can play cloud. And then there's times where it says, you know, controller not found and you can't open it. And so there is a, you know, that's compatibility thing, right? And so that's, again, early adoption that should be solved over time. Again, if you see that, I don't want you to panic. You may not be able to play the game you want right now, but they should have a fix for that eventually. As I get comfortable with gaming, I'm gonna give you a realistic and a true and honest, transparent conversation about what is it like to game on this for the average user. Like, not the person that is a specialist that understands systems, general user experience of what you can expect if you pick this up and turn on the game that you want to play and what that's gonna look like. And so that's what I'm gonna cover here. Um, and then I'm also going to cover what this is like using this. I built a setup for this and so this is going to be upstairs in my bedroom and I want you to see what it's like to have this docked and used as a, a, as a PC setup, a gaming setup, etc. I'm going to do a month later type review, you know, what is it like after all the, you know, the firmware updates have come out and different things like that. So you can expect that. And then I'm going to be doing gameplay. Here's a gameplay on this. Here's a gameplay on that. Here's a gameplay on that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to check out the content on this. Um, lastly, I'll leave you with this. Um, I'm interested to know your thoughts. I'm, I want to know your fears, your fear of missing out. I want to know your, your hesitancy on buying this, your, your motivations for buying it your thoughts, um, all of those particular things is gonna help me gather information to share with you transparently. Um, I love when moments like this happen where we can come together as a community and kind of talk about what this means for the community. And so, uh, yeah, this video is probably long. I'm gonna try to edit it as much as possible to make it short. Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I look forward to continued discussions about this Asus Rogue Ally going forward. And as always, stay cozy in that crazy world. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.